Hey everybody, welcome to Brickfall. My name is Jack and today is another Lego minifigure collection review video and uh, this is I think the last of the main Harry Potter trio. In front of me I've got all the different Ron Weasley minifigures ever made. This guy is one of the famous Harry Potter trio, being Harry Potter, Ron, and Hermione. And from what I can tell, it kind of feels like he's the most well-liked out of any of them. <laughs> Shut up, Harry. Well, whatever you guys will probably let me know in the comments section below, but we are going to be going through this collection chronologically from when they were released, uh, what sets they came out in, and how much they're worth. The first Ron Weasley minifigs were released in conjunction with the uh, first Harry Potter movie coming out back in 2001, The Sorcerer's Stone. She needs to sort out her priorities. And his first appearances were in some of the most iconic sets. This is Hogwarts Express 4708. And he also appeared in the Escape from Privet Drive set 4728. He's got kind of a silly expression on his face. Definitely not um, the classic Lego-ified features that we've seen as of late. But his distinctive features are the freckles. And probably his most distinctive feature is the fact that the orange hairpiece that he has, I believe, was specifically molded for this character and since then has been used on other minifigs but referred to as the Ron Weasley hairpiece. Other than that, there's nothing too special about him. It's a pretty simple print that makes up a blue sweater and collared shirt, and at the moment he sells for around six dollars. A nearly identical version of this Ron also came out in the Gryffindor set 4722. Kind of a silly set, it almost looks like a Friends set nowadays, but the only thing that really makes this guy different is uh, that he comes with one of those starry capes that has the copyright sign just way too big on the internal detailing there. There were also a bunch of sort of silly accessories that came along with this figure that didn't really make a lot of sense, but I think with the inclusion of that cape it makes him a little bit more um, sought after and he's ten dollars. And this last Ron from the Sorcerer's Stone is actually by far the most common version of this guy. He appeared in the Chamber of Winged Keys as well as Snape's class set plus three others and here you can see the really common uh, detailed printing for the Gryffindor um, uniform. All the main characters from this point in production pretty much had the exact same body and now Ron finally gets his wand which came in a light gray because he's got that special cape piece which is just a pain to keep in good condition these days. Even though he's common he still sells for eight dollars. And then there was actually a fourth run minifigure for this movie. Ron, you okay? Yeah, okay. Whew. Lucky we didn't panic. And this is sort of a Ron in civilian clothing. It's just a black shirt with some sort of uh, plaid printing on it. Nothing particularly special. I don't believe it was unique to this fig. And he's got the same expressions and hairpiece and stuff. He comes with a gray wand and appeared in the set Aragog in the Dark Forest. Why spiders? Why couldn't it be follow the butterflies? A friend of Hagrid. Can we panic now? Not a bad set, but a pretty basic fig. He comes in at $5, and this next one is a pretty unique version of him. And by the way, this is uh, now 2002, and we're in the Chamber of Secrets. My wand. Look at my wand. Be thankful it's not your neck. This is the Ron slash Crab version of uh, the minifigure. This is when he turns himself into Crab when they're infiltrating the uh, Slytherin headquarters. Harry? Ron? Bloody hell. You need to sound more like Crab. Uh, bloody hell or just Slytherin house. And so technically none of the prints on the body or the hairpiece or anything is particularly unique, but the head comes dual molded, one with the standard Ron expression that we've seen before, and the other one has the expression for crab. This particular head print is the only thing that really kind of puts him over into any sort of collectability, but still he's relatively cheap coming in at $8. And by the way, the name of that set was simply called Slytherin. Okay, so now we're jumping on up to uh, two years later. This was in conjunction with the release of the movie Prisoner of Azkaban, the third installment. It's a cat, Ronald. What do you expect? It's in his nature. A cat? Is that what they told you? 
Looks more like a pig with hair if you ask me. And from this we get yet another two Ron minifigs. This first one looks like a pretty standard version of Ron. No cape, just him in his Gryffindor colors. And now we've updated to the flesh colored figs. The print as well for his face is updated. He now has pupils. And if I'm not mistaken, it might be a slightly different kind of color orange for the mold for his hair. His appearance was in the Hogwarts castle set. This is the second edition of this set. And it was a pretty big one and well sought after which makes this guy pretty unique considering he's only released in this set and he is $15. The second Ron released this year is a little bit more interesting the torso pieces and the civilian clothing and it's just kind of a color combination we don't really get very often. It's beautiful isn't it? The moon. Divine. He's wearing a brown jacket and has purple and green stripes on a sweater. I'm pretty darn sure that is an exclusive print to just this minifig. And he came out in two sets, the motorized Hogwarts Express, as well as the other Hogwarts Express set, the uh, second edition. He is $13 currently listed, which makes him a decently collectible fig. And then we are jumping on up to the Goblet of Fire, a 2005 release. This is the only Ron that was released for this particular movie slash book. And I gotta say, he is the worst one out there. The body is exactly the same from the Ron that we got uh, the year before. Now we definitely know that the uh, hair piece is molded in a darker orange, but I think you'll notice that the biggest difference with this guy is that uh, his face is just worse. It looks like he's super, super tired. One is either he is really sick or asleep, and the other is just kind of uh, really, really, really tired. I think there is one of the sets he was released in where he is supposed to be very drowsy, but this run came out in three different sets. Rescue from the Mer People, the Drung Stang Ship, and the third edition of the Hogwarts Castle, so he couldn't have been asleep in all three of the sets. He now has a brown one, which I think looks a lot better than that gray that we got before, and despite him being released in three different sets, he's still sort of a sought after fig being $12. I call him the tired Ron. Now we don't actually get any new Ron minifigures until five years later when the uh, Deathly Hallows movies are coming out and they decided to do kind of a throwback couple of sets to the original uh, movies and books, or the first ones I should say. So this Ron came out in the third edition of Hagrid's Hut and it goes all the way back to the Sorcerer's Stone. Hagrid, what exactly is that? That is, uh, it's, um... I know what that is. <laughs> The Ron minifig has an updated hairpiece, which looks sort of like how the older Ron's hair would have looked. But I think most will agree that it is kind of a better look for this character. He's got two expressions now. They look pretty good. It finally matches up with kind of the more contemporary uh, print that we get for Lego minifigures these days. And this is also the first Ron minifigure that has any sort of printing on his back. This set wasn't distributed quite as much as uh, some of the other ones, even though it really wasn't that big of a set. It still was uh, pretty collectible in this Ron minifigure figure sells for $16. If we die for them, Harry, I'm gonna kill you! The other Ron from 2010 is also part of the throwback sets. This is the Hogwarts Express 3rd edition, but it's got the flying car, so I'm pretty sure we can assume this is from the Chamber of Secrets. The only thing different about this Ron fig is the print that we have for his uh, torso. It shows a red sweater vest, and underneath he's got a brown shirt, or at least brown arms on the side. Technically speaking, none of the parts that belong to this minifigure are unique, but um, he was released in a pretty sought after set, so he is a $12 fig. And then 2011 there was a gigantic awesome Diagon Alley set that came out and this Ron was basically released again the only difference now is that he's got brown pants to match up with the arms on the torso and that hardly seems um, a unique feature to have for this fig but right now he is labeled at $15 and all right with that we just knocked out all 11 Ron Weasley minifigs like all the main characters from the Harry Potter collection he goes through quite a bit of changes because the skin tone changes the prints for the face changes as well as the mold for the hair and all the printing on the body. It really does uh, go through kind of a complete makeover by the time you get from the first to the last guy. And if we were to get any other Ron minifig for the future, I would say having an exclusive print for him, uh, what he's wearing during the final battle scene would be probably pretty good to have. 
All right, so that is it for this episode, everybody. Thanks a lot for watching. Remember, if you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe. And if you have any ideas about another kind of Lego minifigure collection video you want to see in the future, let us know in the comment section below. All right, that's it for this episode. Thanks a lot for watching again, and uh, we'll see you next time at Brit Ball.